Hello, my name is Tony Strobel. I'm with Cincinnati Crane. Today is November 2nd. It's 1020, and this is overhead crane training. I'd like to start with the disconnect. This is the manual dis disconnect for the entire bus bar system. This is the only time that you can disconnect or de-energize the power to the entire bus bar system. The orange and green bar that you see that runs down the length of the runway is the bus bar system. That's what carries the power to the crane. The crane feeds from the collector shoes. You see above, that bar is open at the bottom. It is hot. It's finger safe, meaning that you should not be able to get your finger up to where you could, you could uh, get into the energy bar. However, it still is a, a safety item that you need to be aware of. I'm now going to energize the system. So by turning this on, the, the bus bar is now on. It doesn't necessarily mean the crane is on. We're now at the control station. To energize the crane, you need to make sure that the emergency stop is released. This is a spring-loaded button. In an emergency situation, you want to jam that down. That de-energizes the crane. Again, that does not de-energize the system. It's just the crane. But to turn it on, you release that. It's spring-loaded. You hit the start button, and we'll later show that there's a green light on the panel that you can see that indicates that power is now on. Uh, at this point, I'd like to go through our standard checklist that we recommend at the beginning of each shift. This checklist, someone goes through this checklist and verifies these safety features are operational as well as uh, it's an opportunity to visually inspect and make sure that nothing has changed since the last shift. So to start, we would turn on the crane, which I've already done. We want to check the condition of the wire rope. So to do that, you can simply run the hoist down. What I'm doing here. What you're looking for there is kinks. Okay, as you're running the hook down, the hook lock down, you want to look. We're checking the wire rope at this point, so you're looking for kinks or frays. Uh, it's a visual inspection, and you also want to look at the drum and make sure that the wire rope is paying out of and back onto the drum correctly. Uh, if there's any crossover of the wire rope on the drum, you want to stop immediately and do not proceed with operation. Okay, next on the list is rope reeving, and that's basically what I just described. You want to make sure that the wire rope is properly reeved through the sheaves and on the drum. Again, that's a visual inspection. Uh, ho hoist hook. You want to visually inspect the hook and look for any deformations. There should be no weld marks on the hook. Uh, if there are, that's that's an inoperable item. Uh, so you want to just take a few minutes to look at the hook, make sure that there's no cracks or deformities. Okay, next on the list is rope reeving, and that's basically what I just described. You want to make sure that the wire rope is properly reeved through the sheaves and on the drum. Again, that's a visual inspection. Uh, ho hoist hook. You want to visually inspect the hook and look for any deformations. There should be no weld marks on the hook. Uh, if there are, that's that's an inoperable item. Uh, so you want to just take a few minutes to look at the hook, make sure that there's no cracks or deformities. All right, when inspecting the hook, you want to make sure that the hook latch is working properly. Visually inspect the hook. Uh, scratches and, and that, that's normal wear and tear. That's okay. What you're looking for is a crack or a deformation. And if the hook latch ever springs, meaning it's, it doesn't catch on this part of the hook, that's a problem. That's an uh, indication that it's been overloaded and do not use the hook in that condition. Next on the list is limit switches. I'm going to run the hoist down until we hit the lower limit switch. Okay, that's the lower limit switch. This hoist is equipped with a lower limit switch and redundant upper limit switches. I'm now going to run the hoist all the way up to the upper limit switch. 
this is a good opportunity to watch the wire rope and make sure that it's free properly and sitting in the sheets properly. Now hit the first upper limit switch so that the hook can only go up in slow speed. I have not taken my finger off the control button. That's a control safety feature. Now we've hit the ultimate upper limit. I cannot go up any higher. Next on the list is brakes. You can see from the operation that we've done already that the brakes are working properly. There's no slipping. So uh, we move on to the next item, which is slings. We have no slings here at this time. Proper operation per directions. If you look on the bottom of the frame, there is a directional sticker. Those directions should match when operating at the push button. Those directions on the bottom of the crane match the legends on the push button. Always start with down. When checking operations, of the crane directions. You always start with down. This is very important. If down, for any reason, makes the hoist go up, do not operate it. To reiterate, if the down button ever causes the hoist to go up, do not operate it. What has happened is the phasing has somehow, for whatever reason, been reversed, and there could be safety features that aren't working properly if that's the case. So it's very important that you always start with down when checking operations, and if down causes the hoist to go up, do not continue. Okay, next on the list is conductor bar condition. So you would just visually inspect the entire length of the runway. It's also a good opportunity to check the overall site condition and make yourself aware of any new coworkers in the area. Uh, it's, I think it's commonly known that uh, new workers are uh, something that everybody needs to be aware of and you help those new co-workers be, work in a safe manner. So after visually inspecting the bus bar, the work area, address the, uh, any new co-workers, uh, you're ready for operation of the crane. Okay, we've talked about the startup procedure and the checklist that uh, we recommend. Now it's time to run the crane. This crane is equipped with two speed up and down motion. So you simply press down on the button to the first detent, and that's your slow speed. If you press a little farther on the button, you'll feel resistance if you press through that to your high speed. Those are predetermined speeds, and what we recommend is as you're starting to rig a load, as you're starting to pick up the load. You want to make sure that the slings are set and use that slow speed to start your pick. And then same in reverse. When you go to set, a, set down a load, you want to use that slow speed to make your final adjustments or make sure it's in place. Um, this is true both up and down. You have two speeds. Okay, the trolley is set up in a two-step motion and it feels the same. I'm looking at the legend. I'm going to go south. This is the slowest step. This is actually a variable frequency drive. I can accelerate by pushing through that first resistance point, and I can achieve whatever speed I want, and I can hold it. So I do that by pressing through the detent. I accelerate. I hold that speed, and I can also do that in reverse decel side. The trolley and bridge are both set up with two-step variable frequency drive. I'm going to run the crane now. I'm going to go in the west direction. So I first go to that first resistance point. That's my slowest step. I can accelerate to a faster speed and hold that. 
Uh, it's a very user-friendly setup. The variable fre frequency drive, excuse me, is designed to reduce load sway since you have such a finite control of the grain. You can accelerate and decelerate to whatever speed you want up to on the crane, it's 100 feet per minute max. Okay, this is a 10 ton crane. Uh, there is a load cell that will not enable you to pick up more than 10 ton. However, it is your responsibility as the operator not to exceed that. Uh, this crane was load tested on 823 of 12. And from this point on, it is your responsibility as the operator not to exceed the load, excuse me, the load of the crane. 10 ton, 20,000 pounds. Okay, there really is no uh, scheduled or lube order. The bearings on this crane are lifetime sealed bearings. Uh, if for some reason you were ever to observe oil below any of the motors, uh, it'd be an indicator of, of a leak. However, we, we have, that's very rare that that would ever happen. Um, as far as any scheduled maintenance, the crane is required to be tested once a year by a qualified testing agency. And that does not require a load test, only an annual inspection. And that's all I have. I'm always available for questions. Tony Strobel with Cincinnati Crane and Hoist, and our number is right there on the crane. The serial number for this crane is, is in the panel. Uh, if there's any ever, ever any questions about operation of the crane, I'm always available for questions. Thank you.